Hi there, YouTube. Hi there, customer experience aficionados and enthusiasts. This is Dominic, customer experience guy, uh, the Zendesk guy, and my team. I am back with another video. Today's topic is going to be another question of yours, and namely, how do Zendesk statuses work? Okay, before we begin, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Please like it, um, like this video. Please comment if you want to see some special content as for example, I am making this video because somebody asked about how Zenda statuses work. And um, for those of you who are visiting the first time, my name is Dominic. Again, I'm a Zendesk consultant. I've been one for the past eight years. I've been a Zendesk partner for the past two years. Well, I'm actually going to three now. Anyways, doesn't matter. Um, I've been in customer experience for 14 years and uh, I've worked at Zendesk as well, so I'm here to share some of that knowledge. The way that this works is that I share my screen and I walk you through some best practices and some theory. I know nobody wants to see the theory. Everybody just wants to see how, where do I push? Where do I click? Where do I click? I know for a fact because I am of the same uh, built, so I'm built the same. I also just want to just click and uh, see where the click is supposed to happen and nobody wants to listen to the theory. Well, in my eight years of Zenith consultancy, I've noticed that if you don't pay attention to the theory, then it doesn't really help you if you know where to click in Zendesk. It's, it's totally not necessarily very, very useful because in first thing you need to do is you need to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. And then it's just a matter of pushing some buttons, which is it's very easy. It's just Google it and it's there. So uh, let me pull this up and share my screen. So then the status is, hopefully you can see my screen. It's this uh, image that I have. Okay, ticket life cycle. So the ticket life cycle in Zendesk has an amazing journey and I'm going to walk you through it because I am actually very excited um, to walk you through. So when a ticket ends up in your system, it automatically receives the status new. If it's not being assigned to anyone and uh, by any business rules or yeah, any routing rules that you might have, it stays in status new until somebody picks it up and assigns it to themselves. That's when the ticket goes to open status. Open status is also the status in which an agent needs to uh, act on a ticket, meaning that they are have to um, to do something to that ticket. They have to either send. Uh, ask for more information from the customer to help with the resolution, or they, I don't know, they need to reach out to a partner to help them with the resolution again, which in return takes the ticket to solve. Um, no, so from open status, I as an agent go in and take the ticket, I assign it to myself or I assign it to a colleague. Then um, I or my colleague will want to ask for more information from my customer. Hey, dear customer, would you mind giving me your, a copy of your invoice? Would you mind giving me more information on your address? Would you mind telling me, uh, giving me more information about your inquiry so I can better help you? So when we do this, when we ask for more information, we generally, not generally, you put the ticket in pending. This is, um, I'm not trying to give uh, necessarily, I don't want to sound, um, as if I'm trying to impose it. It's just that I'm want, I want you to use Zenesk as it has been intended so you get the most out of it. That's what people don't do. And they end up with a very cluttered and a very big backlog because they misuse these statuses. So you put it in pending, right? So the customer now receives a notification in their inbox or uh, wherever or on their WhatsApp or anywhere and uh, they are supposed to follow up with more information, right? So when they follow up from the pending status uh, and they reply, the ticket automatically by itself goes back to open, which means that it's in red again and the agent needs to act on it again, okay? So it goes to open. Then another scenario is when you don't necessarily need more information from the customer, but you need more information from your team member or from your developer or from uh, management, or you have an escalation. So you put the ticket on hold or a third party that you work with, a partner company that does your deliveries, a partner company that does your outsourcing or et cetera. So you as an agent need to reach out to whoever it is, like the third party or your escalation or your calling and put the ticket on hold for the customer. So the customer will, um, well, the customer won't get any notification, but the ticket still is uh, with you basically, with us, with the team that is working on the resolution. So the ticket is on hold. When somebody gets back to 
uh, you, the third party uh, delivery service or the uh, development team or whoever, they reply to that ticket, it automatically goes back to open again, which is good because now you're an agent, you as an agent see that, oh, okay, this is back to open. It means I need to act on it again, which is amazing, right? So Zenesk always keeps you accountable to open tickets. You need to do something with them. Those are, these are the tickets that have, the, let's say, the, uh, mo the biggest urgency to them. So new and open is, yeah, let's do it. Let's do stuff. <laughs> when you are comfortable with what you've done so far, uh, with the ticket, you um, customer says, "Yeah, that's good. Thank you." You just put the put the ticket to solve. Now, the ticket usually uh, in Zendesk, maybe as you've known, or if you don't know, Zendesk has an automation for you created. So, if you put the ticket in solved, if it stays in solved after four days, it automatically gets status closed. Now, going back to the solved status. The reason why Zendesk keeps the or recommends that you keep the ticket in solved status for four days, three days, 50 days, however much is relevant for you, is because you um, give the chance to your customer to get back to you, right? So the idea behind it is maybe you as an agent consider that the situation has been solved, right? The, the issue has been resolved and you didn't have to think about it, but the customer may think different and they might say, hmm, but this is not different, Mr. Agent. Well, in this case, if they reply from solve, it gets goes back to open and the agent can go back and act on the ticket again and help the customer get their problem solved. But if you get tickets solved, uh, if you don't do this, so for example, if you don't necessarily leave the ticket in solve status for a number of days and you close it directly, if the customer considers that their issue is, has not been resolved, then if they reply to that email thread or wh whichever means or channel that you use, uh, the ticket doesn't go back to open. A new ticket is being created and the flow starts again. So you don't necessarily want to, um, so intuitively, you don't necessarily want to create a new ticket from an issue which the customer has already reached out with, right? Because then you start this other, you start this process again, which is time consuming. So you want to have, um, let's say, an intuitive way of solving requests and leave space for human interaction and human, uh, human psyche and human error and, uh, well, allow us to just be humans, right? So uh, customers might just want to I might just need more help. And it's no reason why to not do that. Uh, so yeah, I hope that made sense to you. So besides this close, uh, closed status after four days, what Zendesk does, it, it holds in the system, this closed status for an additional 120 days, at which point it archives the ticket. Meaning if it's archived, you don't necessarily uh, find it when you search it. The reason why Zendesk does this is because after you reach a certain number of, uh, of tickets that you have uh, solved and closed into your system. So some of the some of my clients have upwards of 100K tickets per month. So when an agent, if an agent opens their browser and you have, for example, this company has uh, 350 agents, when they, a, a customer, not a customer, when an agent <laughs> opens um, their browser, Right. Imagine that each time you open a browser and you have to load millions of, t of tickets, uh, like 350 agents that they all work at the same time and they all open Zendesk. Imagine the computing power that Zendesk has to have in order to show you millions of tickets each for each agent so they can browse through them. So that's why after closed status, it, pu it puts them to archived and in archived, you don't see them anymore. Right. So it's not relevant for you to see tickets from four months ago. Or maybe it is, but that's in the case where you have to make some special adjustments or maybe require Zendesk to just send you um, a copy of your tickets, which an export of your tickets, which they will do for free, so no worries. Um, anyway, this has been the, today's video. And uh, wait, let me take this away. Yeah, this has been today's video. I hope it's, it was helpful. Um, I do these videos unedited because I, I'm I'm very busy as it is and I don't have time to do video editing. This is also a cry for help. So if you're doing if you do video editing and you need Zendesk, we can maybe barter and I fix your Zendesk and you fix my videos, you know, to make them more more interactive because they're not currently. And uh, I'd really need that help. Um, or if it's just a video editor and you're looking for a job, yeah, go go ahead and uh, reach out to me. Also, 
if you've made it this far, I have a secret keyword for you. It's called uh, butternut squash pie. <laughs> so if you have went so far, it's a secret code. Um, I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>